All right, we're out here. It's late March. This old fallow field that's been fallow for about two years, we're gonna burn it. So this was a long time ago for many years, all tillable. The way the farm's set up, it just doesn't make sense to leave it in tillable. I don't wanna cash run it. But what I do wanna do is put a bunch of habitat back here and move the food closer up to the front of the farm. So the first step here is to get rid of this. It was a chisel plow two years ago, so it's still really rocky. So we got a lot of work to do, but we wanna get this burned off before turkey start nesting. And really excited, I got Richard here and Michael here to help. And we're gonna burn this with hopefully no casualties. <laughs> It's fair to assume the farm hasn't seen a burn in a long time. So we started from the back in the old tillable field. This area has some of the highest potential for creating valuable habitat and it also needs some of the most work to get it prepped. For this burn, we used a drip torch and a mixture of diesel fuel and gasoline. So gasoline helps carry the flame from the drip torch to the ground. Diesel fuel provides a longer residual burn time. We used a variety of tools to control the fire in addition to the natural fire breaks on the farm. What was most useful was the BR600 steel leaf blower. I was able to rent it for $34 at a local hardware store and, and rent it for 24 hours. So it's usually a $500 leaf blower. It had a lot of power to clean out some of the around the fence posts prior to the burn and also control it as you went down. Now, if you're brand new to prescribed fires and need a little bit of terminology, here's what I can tell you. A head fire is the fire moving with the wind usually moves very quickly and generates intense flames. Now, back burn is usually used to create fire breaks prior to starting the head fire, but sometimes used to burn entire sites slowly. We got Richard on the sprayer and we made a big long line of back fire. We have a creek right there as an actual uh, fire break that's really nice, but we wanna try to get this ready. The wind's swirling a little bit down here in the bottom, which I wanted to put a tree stand over there <laughs> based off on how this uh, fire is swirling. I don't know if it's gonna work. what you think? You thought it was gonna be too wet, so did I. I was surprised we got good sunshine for a while with the wind yesterday in the sunshine it really dried out these you know mostly foxtail and weeds but we give you a good blank slate after this fire oh yeah that's what we want a lot of habitat to improve here Fresh grass now, if you really want to get in the weeds on what does fire do for the habitat, there's a lot of great information available and I'm far from a biologist. So I'll keep it short on what we're trying to accomplish. Some of the general goals are getting the land closer to ready for planting warm season grasses, stimulate the growth of native plant species and reducing unwanted shrub and tree growth. The farm currently consists of 10 acres of old tillable ground, 20 acres of rolling pasture and five acres of timber and ditches, leaving about five acres for the house yard and barns. Creek rolls through some of the farm and it's situated on the edge of big ag. Overall habitat in the area is pretty lackluster. So that's the focus of improving the farm for habitat for all. So we got the backfire all the way back through here. About to set the head fire, have perfect wind, real good backfire all the way through here. And it should burn pretty well. We have two large food plots that should break up the fire. So we'll do that to get to the first edge of it and then burn the other side. So really for the size of it, it should burn pretty quick and, and reasonable. and and controlled most importantly, so we're not professionals. This is my first big burn ever, so really excited, it's fun. After a failed burn with the 10 acre field, we decided to head to some of the old pasture where there was plenty of fuel and natural fire breaks between the creek and chisel plowed fields. We were wondering if we we're gonna find any antlers. We did find an oldie, but a decent. Not an oldie, but a goodie, but a decent one. It was just kind of right up here on this point, hopped over the fence. Fire jumped a little bit, which is actually okay. It's burning really slow through here, but I uh, hustled over here because I thought I was gonna lose my cedars. <laughs> In that commotion, I found this. So be curious if we find anything else. I think we're gonna burn this while we're here. The big field was not cooperating at all. It's just a little too spotty, as Richard called it, a mosaic burn. So this should burn really easy. So while we're all here, we have all the equipment. We're just gonna keep at it. So I'm pretty green to burning and this is a new endeavor. Thankfully, I had Richard who has previous burning experience and perused YouTube and the internet to gather a lot of information, but with a clear plan and doing it on the right day and conditions, it went super smooth and it was a great time. So we just finished up really burning for most of the day here. Food plot was a failure. We're gonna have to probably mow all that down, figure out what we can do to get that to burn. But thankfully a lot of this old pasture burnt really well. We had a bunch of different fire bricks. We have a creek running through the proper property. We have roads. And so burnt really smooth. So for the most part, this is probably gonna end up being a food plot here. And then just burn off a lot of this undergrowth. This just hasn't been burnt in, gosh, I don't know when. So hopefully it sparks some new growth. And this is uh, just where it begins. This is a large learning curve for me because it's my first farm here and I'm learning as I go. So it's been really fun to burn and uh, excited where things look in a couple weeks here. Hope you enjoyed this 
video here and we have some exciting news we're gonna have a brand new channel you can head over to the link in the description or click right here and you can check out more land content so we have the land podcast that goes live every single monday at 5 a.m and we've been banking those so we're breaking up those conversations putting them on a brand new YouTube channel, and you can check out those uploads every single Thursday and Saturday. Hope you guys go over there, check that out. And right now, we just actually released the first video. It is with how to buy land with partners. Really good conversation. Hope you guys check that out here on your Saturday. Until next time, see ya.